Guidance is internal. Ignition sequence starts. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Permission to board. Permission to come aboard. Permission to board. Permission to bring me aboard. Permission to come aboard. Welcome to the Permission Granted Podcast. Here's D.A. Welcome inside episode 21 of the Permission Granted Podcast, and thanks for everybody for switching over to the new hours here on CBS Sports Radio. We had gone from the overnights last week after two years and now doing 6 until 10 p.m. Eastern time here on CBS Sports Radio. That's 3 until 7 Pacific time. So if you can't catch us in the new time slot because you're working or because your affiliate doesn't pick us up, fear not. We always have these weekly podcasts for you to catch up on, all the stuff you don't hear on the show but then also our full shows are now podcastable as well. So you can get those on iTunes from this very same feed as well as uh, on CBSSportsRadio.com. Just click on the audio tab and they're all there as well, DA On Demand, hour by hour. So you can enjoy that. And uh, we thank you for, for coming over and listening to us. And this is going to be a really fun show. Coming up right now, this is great. Such a funny guy. You might remember him from the first season of Last Comic Standing. Ralphie May, who's on tour, he is going to be coming through San Antonio this weekend and then Colorado next week. And also he's got a big Netflix special that's going to be coming out in February. You see his previous special is called Too Big to Ignore. Such a funny guy. More than a quarter century now in 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 comedy. Just crazy to think about. He hit his 25-year mark. And you can follow Ralphie May by going to ralphiemay.com. And the tour schedule is up there. He joins us. Here on the show, Ralphie, how are you, buddy? Hey, I'm fantastic. What a great weekend for sports, huh? Did you watch some of the NFL playoff games? I did, I did. I've been in football mode since Christmas. I uh, Last Monday, I went to the Texas Bowl and saw my Razorbacks just stomp the horn, <laughs> which, uh, which uh, you know, somebody whose daddy played for the Razorbacks and his mama was a homecoming queen. It was a great day. Anytime you can beat the horns, it's awesome. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, you know, it didn't go my way in the NFL. I'm a big Steelers fan, and and uh, man, that just defense was um, incredible uh, that the Baltimore Ravens had. It was just, <laughs> just amazing, man. Well, you I were- wouldn't want to play them. You were born in Chattanooga and then moved to Arkansas. So going back to that college thing, man. How brutal are Longhorns fans? Because you're right on that border, and there's UT fans just about yeah. everywhere. So when you get to beat them, boy, that's good. Oh, that's great. You know what I love the most was the mass exodus at the beginning of the fourth quarter. I mean, you went from sold out 71,000 people to about 30,000 people <laughs> in about 10 minutes. It was incredible. I tell you, you thought that the Hordes got on their phone were having a fire drill. It was incredible. <laughs> they were leaving. I mean, uh, b- four minutes before the game was over, you could see the UT sideline packing up all their stuff, all right, dumping the extra Gatorade. No need to throw this on the coach. All right, let's go. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> well, wow. So did you grow up around a lot of Cowboys fans then? How would you become a Steeler fan down there? Uh, you know, it happened in the 70s. I was like six, and I saw Terry Bradshaw doing an interview on uh, Monday Night Football, and I honestly said that was the only guy I've ever seen that talked like us on TV, you know, because he was so country <laughs> phone. All right, and I was like, well, that's my boy, because Starbuck talked like he was Johnny you know, uh, smarty pants, and it's like, I ain't going with him. I'm going with Brad Shaw, man, and, and the Steelers Nation's taking me in. Uh, they love me, and I love them. They can't do nothing about it. Tell me you have eaten at Primanti Brothers in Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, but something about a Primanti Brothers sandwich in the afternoon 
doesn't taste as good nearly as when you're wasted yeah. at about, <laughs> about one thirty two o'clock. That's when it's like, oh my god, that's fantastic. What is that? <laughs> you got this Netflix special coming out in February, and I I saw that you mentioned that kind of Netflix is maybe the future of comedy. They're doing a ton of things right now that might be the future yeah. of entertainment as well. What's cool about working with Netflix because they're all over the place. Man, you know what? They didn't put a restriction on me. They didn't. They said we want it big and uh, fast and loud. We want it as as uh, funny as you can get it. And so I got to shoot an hour and a half special, almost two hours. And Netflix, it's crazy because uh, they are taking uh, ninety days to write the code for it, and uh, so it goes to everybody's devices and translating me into 22 languages that is hilarious <laughs> i can't wait to hear uh some japanese guy uh try to explain giner to him okay you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. i love it i can't imagine all of your stuff translates completely in all 20 languages i don't think so i don't think so <laughs> so funny though it's going into Arabic, which That's... I don't know how they're going to deal with, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Muslim is going to get you song. All right. So uh, that'll be all interesting. <laughs> we'll see what we find out. It could either go great or it could go horribly bad, but it's going to go do something. <laughs> Comedian Ralphie May, our guest here on CBS Sports Radio. So it's interesting. Can you believe that it's been 25 years since you've been in the comedy business? No, that blows my mind because I'm still having fun, you know. And it, it's crazy because comedy has never been work until I had my babies. And once you got babies, that's when, you know, it, it all comes together. That's when you're like, oh, okay, all right. You know, it, it's it's actual work at that point. Huh, because you have to provide for the family now and you're not just thinking about yourself? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. That's not it. You know, I grew up poor. I know we can eat beans for a week, beans and cornbread. We'll be just fine. All right. But uh, it's leaving them. It, that's the hardest part is, you know, going on the road. You know, people think they pay their money for the jokes. They don't. They pay their money because I'm not sleeping in my bed. I'm not hugging my babies. I'm not, you know, kissing my wife. That's what they pay their money for. Hmm. So once you had kids and you had to leave the family, did that sap some of the, the fun out of, at least at first, out of going on the road and doing what you do? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. And it really does. I guess when they're teenagers, I won't mind a break. But uh, as far as, uh, <laughs> as uh, you know, uh, when I got them at five and seven, and they're the, just the most fun of all time, you know, it, it's, it's a real bummer to have to go on the road all the time. That's why, like, this week we're in Houston, and we've got uh, – it, it's so much fun. You know, we've got the, the, the kids here with us. My wife's performing with me. It's fantastic. How is it to have a family that's bookended by stand-up comedians, you and your wife? Because it, it's got <laughs> to be really unique – and I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's better in that way because you guys can really share and, and your kids can share and a kind of a common experience for everybody. Exactly what happens, man. You know, um my my kids were I mean, the first time April was on stage, she was nine days old. Uh, you know, we didn't have a nanny when we just had one. We just did the switch off on stage. And and the same thing and when we when we had my son August, it was the same thing too. Wow! It was just a switch, and it was just so much fun. Do you ever then tailor back some of your stuff? Because I mean, you are not worried about going into some controversial topics and off-color yeah. topics. But if your kids are there watching it, oh no, they're not watching. They're in the green room playing, and April would fall asleep during my show. <laughs> All right, she's a genius. <laughs> All right, um, <laughs> uh, but no, I, I never tailor it back for anybody, to be honest with you. You know, it's funny. I, I saw you do a Q&A, and you said that kind of the modern comedy isn't really the comedy that you enjoy, that there's kind of this idea that guys are just maybe complaining out there and worrying about their day, and it's not really punchline jokes. So how do you kind of fit right. into the modern comedy? 
I don't, and I'm glad uh, because uh, I, you know, the audience responds to it. Uh, you know, modern comics they they just want to deliver the the minimum amount of jokes. They do 45 minutes, and it's usually the same 45 you saw an hour ago. I mean, a, a year ago, um, and and they don't write new stuff. Um, I like, for instance, I was in Houston in March and I'm doing a completely different two and a half hours, uh, right now, uh, in Houston. And that's the way I do it. I write jokes. I, <laughs> I do long routines and I give people their money's worth. And those are all things that a lot of young comics, A, either can't do or don't see the necessity to do it. But I think, you know, I am a dad and I'm a husband, so I know what it takes to, to, to get your girl out on a Saturday night. You know, you got to work two hours for the ticket, and then you got to work another two hours for dinner because, you know, you can't eat food you've already bought on, on, uh, on dinner night, well, on date night, rather. You got to go out to eat, and then you've got to pay a babysitter, and then she wants to drink. And it's like a, a eleven dollar drink, and you're like, "Oh, girl, you better eat that ice." <laughs> eat eleven dollar drink, my ass. All right, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like we—I well, told you we should have got high in the parking lot. What the hell are you doing drinking that? All right, all right eleven dollar drink. You can eat that ice. You go keep that cup too. Just put it in your pocketbook. We're taking. I'll be drinking my orange juice out of that cup tomorrow. All right, and so it, it's it's it's. It's expensive, and when someone delivers the minimum, I think they're a cheat. I think they cheat their audience. I think they cheat the people, you know. And I don't want to do that. I don't believe in it. And uh, you know, I'm I'm from the south, and and you got to look people in the eye and shake their hand and say thank you for coming. And I do that too. I do meet and greets after my show every time. Was there a comic specifically that kind of changed this, or maybe just the age group of the comics doing it? It's the age group. It's the age group. You know, it's the, um, I mean, you're talking about kids that grew up playing sports where they didn't keep score and everybody got a trophy. You know, they make me sick to my stomach. You know, it's like, uh, you know, not everybody's the same, man. Not everybody's a winner. All right, we need to stop this this craziness in this country that every kid deserves a uh, uh, a trophy. No, you got to earn them. That's why they're called trophies, dummy. <laughs> right, and and it's that that same thing. It's that mentality of uh, I'm entitled. You know, uh, you got stinky, dirty white kids who are wondering why they can't get a job. Hey. Uh, try peeing on the outside of your pants. Okay. All right. You know, um, Hey, how about this? Uh, don't wear a girl pants. I shouldn't know you've got camel toe from the back. I shouldn't know that. You know, I mean, I'm not going to hire you. I'm sorry. You got tattoos down your arm. You're not going to sell a lot of cars for me. You know, I'm sorry. You know, you people wonder why they can't find a job. Well, just quit making dumb choices, stupid. You know, I mean, it's the same thing in comedy. They get into comedy. They take it, it lackadaisical. They, they phone it in. And they, uh, I think that stinks, you know. I mean, only the, like, 90% of the new comics are like that. And it's just infuriating. So I, I just go up there and try to lead by example, bring new jokes every time, and rock the mic. I saw that you guys are driving the old Dave Matthews band bus. So did you get it cheaper because it was old Dave Matthews band bus, or is that more expensive, the sticker price? Um, it was it was cheaper because it's a suspect of being the one that dumped in Chicago. Oh, right? wow. And, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then I explained how I had to power wash all that crappy music out of that bus. <laughs> All right, and, uh, and so we negotiated pretty hard and got a great bus. You know, it only had 200,000 miles on it, and that big-ass diesel is, will go a million four. So I got a bus for a steal. It was great. That's so funny. I, I went onto your online store. It's great that it's the 
D's Nuts online store. There's <laughs> nothing that makes me want to buy a T-shirt and a DVD quite like D's Nuts online store. Let me tell you, it's so funny because uh, my uh, my company is D's Nuts. And because, you know, I've had huge jumps in income, I've been audited three times in the past 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and and my my official title is h n i c okay and for those of y'all who don't know it's probably better and for those of you who do know you're giggling a little bit <laughs> so i'm the h n i c of d's nuts and with and that means the state of california has recognized me as that the state of tennessee has recognized me as that and the federal government has recognized me as that but the first time i came in there was a white guy and a black guy the black guy was in charge the irs agent he looks at my paperwork and sees that uh instead of being president or ceo i said i was the hnic he started laughing hard he uh he said <laughs> All right, make sure it all adds up. We're out of here. And that audit was like eight minutes long. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> so I guess it helps him take pace forward. It's it, great. It's great to, I'm sure, also get the paperwork in the mail of an audit from the IRS and see it titled to D's Nuts. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's hilarious. You want to take a picture of it, but they <laughs> they take that stuff serious. You know, I've had something that lasted longer with guys with no sense of humor, but when you got somebody funny, I'll I'll make them laugh. That is fantastic. Ralphie May, now the, the tour is going to come through San Antonio this week and then Colorado next week. You can follow yeah. the entire tour, ralphiemay.com slash tours. Follow him on Twitter as well, at Ralphie underscore May. You're on the road. You got the Netflix thing coming up on February. You are a busy man. Busy, busy man. And things are going great, man. I can't say enough good things about life. It, it, it's awesome. Well, that's awesome, man. Everybody here on the crew loves your stuff, and uh, it really means a lot that you carved out some time for us. Best of luck on the tour. We'll be watching for the Netflix special coming up in February. And, uh, Ralphie, it's great, man. Thanks so much. You the man. Hey, thank you, brother. I appreciate all y'all. Y'all were fantastic. And, uh, hey, go Hogs for next year. Watch out, SEC West. Pig suey, baby. Grown men up there. That's right. That's right. We had Brett Bielema here on the show a couple months ago, man. Talk about a grown man. He's got things cooking. He's cooking with gas, I'm telling you. He, he's ready. He's calling his defense nine of a thousand gorillas, and I believe it. It's going to be fantastic. Ralphie, man, great stuff again. Thanks so much. Good luck, buddy. Thank you, boys. Y'all have a good day. All right, much thanks to Ralphie May for joining us here on the show. Moraz, uh, you've got to be very uh, very proud of a fellow Chubbo Nation member who has reached such great success. Representing. When you're somebody like Ralphie May and you carry around that extra weight like most of us do, when you make it big in the world, you make us all proud. You know, we actually got the, the idea to have Ralphie on because you were watching his special on Netflix. Right, exactly. I was sitting on the couch uh, being lazy as usual yeah. and uh, fl- thumbing through my Netflix, and I was like, oh, Ralphie May, I haven't seen him do uh, much in a while. I was watching, I was laughing hysterically and i was like man i gotta look into ralphie may i think he'd be a funny podcast guest i had watched him on last comic standing i i that was the only season i watched of last comic standing i believe it was the original yeah yeah it was the first season right so yeah and that's where he really made a name for himself but he had been in the business for you know years before yeah. then yeah he lost to dat win no dat win was a former linebacker of the <laughs> <Cal-> <laughs> right i know who you're talking about that fan that fan who i haven't seen do anything no. since so but I had forgotten how funny Ralphie was. That the interview we just did with, he was so funny. You know what I liked about him too, like in referencing his sports fan stuff. You could talk about how he was talking about the Texas fans leaving and stuff. Yeah, he's your typical, you know, bratwurst eating, beer drinking oh, fan. No who, as soon as his team starts winning and the other fans are in the building leaving, he loves a good taunt. Yeah, and he's just that guy you want to punch in the face if you're that visiting fan leaving because he's he's the guy who you look at and you're like, oh, this guy's never played sports a day in his life, and here he is mocking me, and he's drunk, he's having a great time, and it's a Annoying me. I don't know if I could ever hate Ralphie because I think he would look so jolly celebrating his team's wins. He, well, <laughs> you might just laugh at him instead. Yeah, you yeah, might yeah. just laugh at him. But yeah, no, definitely, that's the kind of guy I like. I that's a guy I could tailgate with. He he might be one of the highest ranking members of Chubbo Nation because he has reached such great success. I mean, comedians like Kevin James or the guy from Mike and Molly. These are. And Ralphie May, these are large men that uh, that have achieved great, 
great success. Well, I'll make two points that. Yes, I'm proud of all of them for achieving success, but there is no ranking. I am the sole ranking member. I am the dictator. There is nobody else in there. Second of all, I got to be honest, Ralphie May doesn't gross me out. Kevin James, I lost a lot of respect for. Really? A couple years ago when the All-Star game was at City Field, he played in that celebrity softball game. Yeah. And he slid in headfirst into second base and got up. Jersey all undone or whatever. And you know what? I thought he embarrassed Chubbo Nation that day and was it was a mess. He was a sloppy mess. You got to hold it together, too. Now, this is interesting. See, I think that I know that uh, this has gone to your head and your ego is exploding and you feel like right. there should be only number one in the thictator. But I think you need a cabinet, if you will, a kitchen cabinet. And I think you have, yeah, I think you have to have some some people around you for some decisions. I would put Ralphie May in there, uh, and I we would have to think about some of the other large men, maybe like a Gilbert Brown or something. Right, not in not there. Alan who listens to the show thinks he's a self appointed VP <laughs> that doesn't exist. Uh, no, but I think we guys that have really raised to great heights, being chubbos, uh, we should really think about being in your kitchen cabinet. But the other point is that we now know. Governor Christie of New Jersey will never be in your kitchen cabinet. Not welcome. He's welcome to buy some land somewhere and start his own, uh, basically, colony. Knock- yeah, his own colony, his own knockoff version of Chubbo Nation. You know, the Burger King to my McDonald's, if you will. Yeah. But uh, no, he is not. After what he pulled the other night in Dallas, never again. I was surprised. You rarely, if ever, go after chubby guys. Uh, and in this well, he's case, beyond chubby, so it doesn't matter. Well, I know you don't want me to use the f word, though. You know what? For for Chris Christie, I did it on the show. You're more than welcome to. Okay, you rarely get it go, all out. You rarely go after fat guys. No. And this guy, you did. We saw we saw Chubbo on Chubbo crime with you and. Was was your biggest problem how he celebrated or being in that box or simply because he's a Cowboys fan that governs the state of New Jersey, which should be a Giants fan like you? Listen, uh, my political answer, no pun intended, will be that it was the way he celebrated acting like a mess. But deep down, I think it bothered me that he was in that Cowboy box. Okay. As a, the Giant fan, the unbiased, uh, basically, Giant fan in me, I thought it was a disgrace. The guy runs the state the Giants play in, a uh, state many Eagle fans play in down south, and he's up there celebrating in Cherry's box. Take a hike, buddy. What did your dad say when uh, you guys saw him celebrating again in the Jerry box? He said, that's it. Until for, until he's out of office, we are not traveling into Jersey or paying any tolls to the state <laughs> of New Jersey. You know, this has not been a kind political move for Chris Christie. Now, I don't know if people, I don't know if people won't vote for him just out of his allegiance to a certain fandom, but everywhere he's gone over the last couple of months since he's been really popular, you know, kind of out there as a Cowboys fan, Eagles fans and Eagle politicians have trolled him. Giants fan, nobody is happy with this around here. It's not a good look at all. Well, it's just, it's so, it's odd because how many states do you have like that in the United States where there's multiple fans, like a huge majority of Eagle fans live in that south part of Jersey, a huge part of Giant fans live in that north part of Jersey, and you just happen to be the fan of the team both of them hate the most. Right. And you're the guy in, you know, basically in charge of the state all these people live in. It's just a terrible look. And you know what? Did he maybe know he was going to be the governor of New Jersey when he was in his footy pajamas watching, you know, Roger Stolbach play quarterback? No. But that being said, then you know what? Stay at home in your little cowboy basement you've built for yourself at your house. We don't need to see you on national TV in Jerry's box. It's it's spitting in the face of all of your giant and eagle voters. So here's the question. Do we think that so do we have a problem? I think I do have a problem. I want to see you. Do you have a problem with a guy that picks a team based on their success? I mean, because let's face it, he didn't right. grow up in Dallas and he only picked the Cowboys because they were good. If he's personally picking them because they're good, like I know like there was a kid growing up who was a Packer fan because Elway was winning, uh, a Bronco fan because Elway was winning the Super Bowls. That's a disgrace. Now you have to stick with them your whole life. If his dad was a Cowboy fan, then I have no problem yeah, with I got that. A, I got a hard time believing that Chris Christie's dad was a Cowboy right. fan. Right. Well, that's my point. If he was, fine. If not, yeah, I think that's a disgrace because you're just, you're just hop, you just want to win right away as a kid without, you know what? Sticking it with your blood. You know, how many Jersey guys are Jet fans their whole lives and have never got to experience that? You can't do that. You got to be smarter even as a kid. You know, I really like LeBron, um, and I think he gets unfairly criticized a lot. But I think the biggest the biggest joke going is that he's a Yankee Cowboy fan. Come on, from from Ohio. Come on, I mean it's, that it's not that they didn't have a baseball team. It's not that they didn't have a football team. He just didn't choose those teams. No, he chose the two teams winning, which is just oh, it's so disgusting. 
I can't believe how much you hate Chris Christie. I would think that maybe there would be a part of you that was proud that a chubbo could raise to such great heights politically. No. The only thing that raises the heights is his belly clapping up with his, you know, man boobs every time he jumps in that box. There was a lot moving when he jumped up there. Oh, my a God. A lot moving. A lot moving. And, boy, he is going to be the fattest snowman in Green Bay if he makes that trip. <laughs> he won't be sitting outside, though. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's a long walk from whatever limousine he's got into Lambo. See, I might also respect him a little bit if he did end up you know, sitting outside with the people. But, but he not, won't. He won't sit out with the cheese. No, heads. he won't. He'll be in his stupid salmon colored uh, sweater jumping around in the box in Green Bay. You can always subscribe to our podcast by going to youtube.com slash the DA show. Subscribe there to our YouTube channel. Also, this is on iTunes, just like our full shows are on iTunes. And of course, you may be listening to this on SoundCloud as well. So there's a million ways to get the permission granted podcast. We'll still do this weekly, but remember, full shows are podcasted as well. So you'll never miss a minute of the DA show and you won't have to listen to commercials either. Not bad. All right. Moraz has his producer side B with. New member of the DA show staff, Steve-O, Steve Moralia, now. All right, welcome into side B of the Permission Granted podcast, our first in the year 2015. Uh, joining me will not be Kenny Brock, the former Wheels of Steel member today. Instead, Steve Moralia, who has hopped on the Wheels of Steel on the DA show in our uh, inaugural flight in the new time slot. Steve, how are you? Sean? I'm great, thanks. How are you? How about that little short end? I like that. Your little radio voice you're giving us. Is it not natural? What's going on here? Oh, jeez. Well, Steve has been, uh, we've been bonding over the past couple days as we uh, get used to working with each other. We've known each other, obviously, through the newsroom and stuff like that. And uh, he worked in this time slot previously, so he's showing me a little of the ropes while I show him the DA show ropes. And one thing, Steve, I can't seem to grasp yet, which I'm going to have to follow your lead on, is... When the heck to eat dinner since we're on in the form prime the four prime dinner hours on the East Coast? Yeah, you have to stay consistent. Whatever you do, you have to pick consistency. The movements have to stay the same. I mean, you gotta be you gotta be level. I I normally I eat frequently. I eat at once an hour. Probably. Yeah, you like, snack on for, small. for a skinny guy. You're a pig. You eat a lot, but you eat a lot of like trail mix and stuff. It's like you're a horse at the trough to just go into town. Trail mix, nuts, berries. So you like nuts. Fruits. I do love nuts. <laughs> you love nuts. All right. Well, now we've learned that Steve loves nuts, which is great. It's good to know that Steve loves nuts, and uh, he eats them frequently on the show, which is great. That's good. But, yeah, I can't figure this out. So that's one thing in this time slot so far I would say has probably been the biggest adjustment for me is that, you know me, I like to eat, I need to eat, you have to eat like this, and I just can't figure out what time I'm eating dinner. Like, a lot depends on when I have to put guests up or what I need to, you know, pull sound-wise. It's, it's freaking me out, and until I get that down, I don't think I'm going to be calm in this time slot. The first thing I do when I come in is eat. I open up a small, whether it be a, dr- a beverage that is like a meal replacement or... A beverage? Can you let loose a little bit? It's a drink. We don't got to talk all formal all right. here. Well, listen, it's a, I, I call it a beverage. I've been, I've been on this chai seed kick. Lately. Chai seeds. And it's supposedly very good for you. They've got a ton of antioxidants in them. There's more I don't fiber even know, in them. I don't even a, know what an antioxidant is. Anti means against. What's an oxidant? I have no idea. I just know they're good for you. Blueberries are good for you. They're packed with antioxidants. These have like 10 times more antioxidants than, than blueberries. So, so you I, like eating or consuming I'm, antioxidants and you have no idea what they do they're, or they're what they mean. healthy. I'm a very healthy eater. That's one thing that maybe the listening audience will get to know about me. And I know that you're on a big health kick. I am. Not and as big as you, biggest, apparently. But the biggest thing, the biggest, I guess, uh, adv- most, the biggest advice I can give you is just drink a lot of water. That's all you got to do is drink I, a lot of water. To leave out I the do, sugars. I no do. sodas. I feel, oh, I can't drink soda, Save really. Save the carbs for the beer. I'll do <laughs> Well, the beer always has to hit on the weekend. I don't drink soda, really. Uh, maybe I may have, like, seven sodas the entire year. Depending, well, that also depends if I'm having any with alcoholic beverages. But I might have a little iced tea. But mostly I stick with the water. And I feel like I drink a a bunch of water and nothing is never enough from what they say you need. What do they say you need? Seven cups of water a day or something like that? I drink eight of these a day. Eight bottles. It will actually yeah, eight, eight of these, these as the podcast uh, you know audience can really see right. the bottle of water eight, you're holding. Twenty up. fluid ounces of water. Fluid in, ounces. In, in again with the proper speech. In, what is this? studio when I'm here. When I'm at home, it's glasses of water. It's huge glasses, jugs of water. So you just constantly time. drink water. See, I guess that's what yep. I need to do. I, that's what I need to do. I don't know about how many antioxidants I need or what that even means again, but apparently I need more of those too. So do I gross you out then? 
If you're such not a health kick, not are at you all. sure? Are you just saying that because I'm in here? Uh, I mean, I've been known to have a bias towards fat people before. Are you anti-fat? You're way too Hold nice. on, hold on. But I just you say Chubb. I got to say Chubbo, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I can't use yeah. the F word. Yes, I get very offended if people use the F word. I find the, the word fat, and I'll say it here, and that's the last time you'll hear me say it on this podcast, to be uh, offensive to uh, fat people as the second to last time you'll hear me say that on the podcast. So, But you're saying that Chubbos, as we'll call them, they have grossed you out in the past. Uh, sometimes. You don't have to say sometimes. A lot of no, chubbos listen to this. You know what this. it is? If what, it, what it comes <laughs> down to is a lot of times you associate being chubby or chubbos right? with being lazy. I see wow. a lot of effort coming out of you. So that's <laughs> what that's my, my the what what's perceived is not necessarily how I you know how how I should look. At so it, for me, perception isn't reality. So I'm a hustler. Right. I hustle for a for a chubby guy. You are a very hard worker. But instantly, like if you're walking down the streets of Manhattan because we broadcast here in Manhattan, and you see, let's say, a fat guy basically approaching. God, I said fat again. That's now four times. If you see a chubby guy approaching, like let's say a hot dog cart, immediately you're thinking this guy's a lazy waste. Is that a, you're judging a book uh, by its cover? Yes. One hundred percent. That guy could be the hardest worker in his office. Doesn't he matter could. to your eyes. You think he's lazy. He could. And it's just because he's big, and you feel like he's lazy and losing weight, or just lazy in general in life. He's just a lazy, lazy person in general. So fat people are lazy. For all those fat but people out there listening, out there, don't be killing me because I just complimented you before. He, but see, he buttered it up. Now we got Steve to bait in, and we understand that. You know, I run a nation, obviously, Chubbo Nation. I got you. That's I my side it. gig. Uh, I'm a thick tater. Uh, there are a lot of people under my nation, and we don't let anybody or everybody in. So you're basically you would want nothing to do with that, and you're I'm not, and you I'm think out. it's a nation full of lazy people. Yeah, I think so. I do. Wow. I mean, I listen. But the, know, but the dictator has a lot of hustle. But the people, my my peasants and merchants, they're all lazy. I, I I would have to meet them all on an individual basis, but based on the eye test, yes, I would do that. Believe it or not, I've gotten into this a lot with Mike Diaz. Okay. Who is a, uh, who is Mike a CBS Diaz, Sports our, Radio Our employee. listeners are familiar. He has uh, some. He runs the Fantasy Football League, if you've listened to the DA show, and he had those problems with Schwartz. Oh. And he's as thin as this pin. This pen. Yes. I mean, this is a tiny. I mean, he is he is thin. And he knows, thin. <laughs> he knows how much I can't stand fat people. In Interesting. Chubby people. Chubby people. I'm I sorry. Can, I've got to get used to this. I can say fat because I, well, I'm kind of fat. Um, I'm more big boned. You have to don't offend us. Say chubby and stick with that, right, and we'll have uh, a nice relationship here in this new time slot. All right. Now I will t- s- tell you this much: when I graduated college, I kind of let myself go afterwards. I got up to two hundred and eleven pounds. Could you imagine this build being two hundred and eleven pounds? No, because I haven't been two hundred and eleven pounds probably since fourth grade. Jeez, I wish I could get that. That's my right. goal: is to get down to two eleven. But keep working. <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep working. Now, other than the fact that you hate fat people, is there uh, is there anything else that the listeners should get to know about Steve Moralia? One thing I find interesting: you don't have Twitter. I, I don't. Understand. I don't have Twitter. It's 2015. Pretty, How do you, I, you have Twitter? I'm anti Twitter. I use the company Twitter. Believe it or not, I booked my first guest ever on Twitter this past weekend. I've done that which hundred is, times. But I know. through the company Twitter you use? Through the company Twitter I used. Come on, man! Why don't you have a Twitter? I'm just not a fan of Twitter. Okay, but like I don't like the concept that everybody can have a forum. I don't like that. Well, well I, boy, I, sounds I, like you're forming like a like I'm a dictator. Like you're a bit of a dictator yourself. I might be. No freedom I'd, of speech for I, you, huh? I mean, no freedom of speech and having a, a forum where everybody feels important and that their their thoughts matter. I mean, they don't. Nobody cares what I'm doing. I can't stand it when people tweet, oh, I just went from my living room to my kitchen. Nobody I'm tweets that. I'm opening the refrigerator right now. You tweet takes. I think as oh. a producer in this business, you need to have Twitter. I can't imagine somebody not having Twitter. I've survived two years now without it. I'm doing just fine. That's amazing to me. And you have no, like, you are you going to just draw this line and stand like there's never going to be a point in your career where you're going to say, you know what, I need a Twitter? I don't know. I mean, I'm so far so good, but I... Might need a Twitter one day. I I don't know. I'm I'm staying strong. Interesting. So all those listening, um, you can follow me at Mraz CBS. You can't follow Steve. So if you're uh, basically a chubbo out there that wants to call him out, you got no way of getting in contact with him, baby. Look at that. That's a safety net right there. <laughs> He's got a safety net to protect. Is there anything else we should know about you? Uh, not really. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm a health nut. I played Division three baseball at a college that nobody's ever heard of and i got into the radio business and i love it now do you play will you be one of these guys that had like a baseball career that now is over and never went to the major leagues that you'll 
be against playing like beer league softball because no, you're too played, good for that? I played beer league softball. Okay, good. Because there are there are guys like that. I know four this, baseball players who are like that. No, that's not me. This past summer I played in the league on Wednesday nights because those are my off nights. Okay. And I popped a hamstring. So I'm definitely not in the shape that I used to be in. Popped a hamstring? Oh, it was brutal. Running down first base there a bit? R- rounding second and heading to third. Oh, did you make it to third on the no, I, hamstring? No, it, like it looked like I got shot. And you just dropped. Right out of right field. Boom. Now dropped that's right she, down. Oh, Black and blue. Nasty. I'll show so that's you nasty. And obviously you're not in the major league, so you're not going to carry an injury is an injury. Uh, that's an awkward situation. Though you fall rounding second. Does somebody come over and tag you out? <laughs> I crawled to the back. I mean, the short distance. Right. You know, in, so you made softball. it. You were safe. I made it. I think they felt bad for me. I didn't see the ball coming, so I was... And you basically had bad. to get wheeled off the field so they could continue uh, the game. Pinch runner. They brought in a trouble pinch run for me. <laughs> now that is the ultimate irony. It is. That is the ultimate irony. Okay, so you're a baseball guy. guy. was three bills easily. <sighs> three bills. <sighs> you know, Schwartz, Peter Schwartz, almost four bills. We found that out on the overnight session of the DA show. Boy, I saw that 40-yard dash. Not Were pretty. you impressed? Not pretty. I wasn't pretty, but were you impressed with the fact that he could even get that time in jeans with how big he is? I couldn't believe how slow D.A. was. Wow. So you think D.A. was slow? I do. D.A. ran like Forrest Gump there. The hands were cupped, and he just kind of chugged them along on his sides. I and couldn't he took believe off. how awful it looked. So you think D.A. And should be faster? Most, I'm not the most coordinated person in the world. I expected a little bit more out of D.A., I'm not going to lie. Interesting. That's very interesting. I, we're going to have to bring this up. Well, D.A., you know what? We're not going to tell D.A. D.A. is going to find out when he listens to this part. And I hope you guys get into an awkward little uh, newsroom banter about it. We'll see. That would be very interesting. So now you are a baseball guy. I know you're a huge baseball fan. You're a New York Yankees fan. Yep. Because uh, that's one thing we've had in common in the past. Uh, Hall of Fame voting came down this week. Your thoughts? Uh, well, you know, I think that the four people that got in, Johnson, Martinez, Smoltz, and uh, Biggio, were deserving. But I have a problem with people that won't vote for the so-called PED users. Okay, that would be me, so let's have this debate. Let's okay, hear. so you, you don't think that Clemens and Bond should be in? Well, you know what? I should rephrase that. I don't think, and I think we're going to reference Mike Piazza here. Is that Piazza where we're leading? Well. Um, Piazza didn't get in, and I don't think he should get in because I don't think Mike Piazza, who, although there's no smoking gun, I think any logical person who followed baseball in the quote-unquote PED era would have to believe that Piazza probably took something. And I know that's where we get into a little, you know, fine line area. It's a gray area. It's a very gray area. But until we put Barry Bonds, the king of all of them, in because he's the all-time home run, everything like that, I don't think you could put guys like Piazza in. So if you're going to open the gates and you're going to put them all in, that's fine. But I don't think we're in a situation now where you could pick and choose these guys and go, well, there's no proof because just because they got lucky and there's no proof shouldn't, you know, pun- you know, mean that we should still punish the guys who got basically unlucky and we found out they did it. No, I mean, listen— here, here's the thing, is that these voters make up their own rules. And that, that's the biggest problem that I have is with, you know, writers that, that, that draw a line in the sand and say, I'm not voting for this guy because. Right. Or the fact that Pedro Martinez and Randy Johnson weren't unanimous choices, well, that's ridiculous. I mean, these guys were, we grew up in the era, we watched the game, they were the dominating forces in baseball. Right. Roger Clemens, Barry Bonds, these guys were were the elite. They were our childhood heroes, and I think that they were the best. They need to be in the Hall of Fame. Well, see, I, I, are, are, I tend to agree with you because here's the thing. In a whole era where basically the majority of people, there's been reports that 75% of the people, you know, there have been athletes that said that, that 75% of the players use them. You know what? If you want to put asterisks next to their numbers and think they shouldn't be all-time this, all-time that— but when it's an entire era of players, I mean, you can't just omit the era. So basically, all for one, one for all, They, if they were worthy enough and were the best in that era, PEDs or not, you can't pick and choose. Maybe they all should just be in. Yeah, and I mean, listen, I, I, I love I love the analysis that, that a lot of these talking heads, you know, on MLB Network and the like come out with. I love Tom Verducci, but at the end of the day, I don't care. I don't right. care about his vote. Why does his vote count so much? Or what? Well, you know, I mean, well, it counts just as much as the next guys. Right. But, but these these writers, I mean, they, they've got an agenda, and it and it clearly shows. I mean, there are people in the Hall of Fame like Rick Farrell, who was a catcher for the Washington Ooh. Senators. I mean, this guy hit two eighty one with twenty eight home runs and seven hundred and thirty four RBIs. He's in the Hall of Fame. He got in because of the Veterans Committee and because a Tigers owner basically. Right. Wrote so a nice why, letter why is he in and not Barry Bonds? But, yeah, I mean, this guy isn't even Jorge Posada, and Jorge Posada wasn't a Hall of Famer. You know what I like what you did there, Steve? You brought some stats to the table here I on the Permission Granted Podcast. I'm just saying. 
I'm just saying that the, there are people in the Hall of Fame. You can go to Ozzy Smith, who I'll, I could get killed. If I had Twitter, I could get killed for saying that he doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame. He doesn't. His numbers weren't that impressive. Same thing with Phil Rizzuto. Bill Mazarowski hit one big home run in his life, and he's in the Hall of Fame. You're right. You're absolutely right. I, I don't I don't get it. I, it, it. It drives me up a wall, and then we're keeping guys out like Roger Clemens and Barry Bonds and Mike Piazza. I'm, I'm sorry. These guys, are they, they belong in. They should be in. They need to be in. I, they, there's there's going to come a time, though, when the old guard is out, and even if these guys get in with the Veterans Committee, eventually these PED users are going to have to get in. If, if the Veterans Committee Mark is McGuire, still around. Mark McGuire, another guy. Uh, another guy, absolutely. You know, it's it's tough to stomach. You know, the, the NFL Hall of Fame Committee has it right because they have a representative from every city who has a guy that they're representing on the ballot, and you know what? They'll sit in a war room like a jury – and they'll argue about it and argue about it and argue about it. And eventually they have a vote and they, they bring you the candidates every year. And instead of just kind of like, uh, okay, we're going to send out your, you know, your all-star game ballot here. Just leave it here and we'll tally the numbers like it's an election. I think baseball needs to figure out a way, you know, enough with this. The problem with baseball is too much all oh, these old traditions. Take some pages out of the book from some of these other sports. And I think the NFL Hall of Fame voting has it right. I, I don't mind the tradition aspect of it. I guess uh, I'm a very traditional person. I guess I could have thrown that in earlier. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I guess I'm old school in a sense, but there are probably 600-some-odd people that vote. I don't know the exact number for the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. They're all writers. Some of them may not have watched a game in 40 years. They That's might not true. Have even, they, they might not have been to a game or, or even know half the players on the ballot. That's where there's a problem. That's true. I've always thought that, too, with the Heisman Trophy voting, too, because anybody who's won a Heisman Trophy gets a Heisman vote. Now, you're telling me, I'm just going to throw a name out there. Who knows? Ron Dane. Is he watching every college football game? No that, game, that he, Dane. Right. Like, that, that he could make a decision on, you know what, uh, Mariota deserves the Heisman over Winston. Like, how much are these guys watching? You know, it's just because it's just very odd how, okay, well, you've written, written for this long. It almost like there should be like a refresher every year or mix them in and out. Say, you know what, you're going to have a vote this year, you know, lessen the amount of votes you take per year. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of talk in the coming days about how the system needs change. It's right. happened now for a couple years. A couple years ago, we didn't have a single person get in. Right, that was great. I almost forgot about that. It was two years ago, I yeah, think. Yeah, now this year we have four people that get in. That's the first time since 1955. That's 50 years since four people have gotten into the Hall of Fame. That's crazy. That is crazy. And you know what else is crazy? I, and this is another thing that gets beaten nonstop. But uh, Randy Johnson came percentage points away from Tom Seaver's record. So Randy Johnson got, I think it was 97% of the vote. Yep. Something like that. Uh, the fact that we we can't have unanimous a whole, I mean, who looked at Randy Johnson and said, you know what, he's not a Hall of Famer? Who looked at Tom Seaver and said that? And you know what, this the perfect example of a guy who's going to come up, a guy who was not linked to PEDs, is going to be Mariano Rivera. Is there honestly, there's going to be, there's going to be somebody out there who says, you know what, I'm not voting Mariano Rivera into the Hall of Fame. How, if you don't, you should have your vote removed. I, I'm I don't you. understand how we can't have you not, there are certain guys you just don't, yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. What's so hard? What is make? What is it like? The cool thing to go? Well, I'm not going to vote for him because everybody else is. So I got to make sure I get this guy a vote. It's so stupid. I, I'm with you. Pedro Martinez, 91.1 percent of the vote. Dominant. The guy lost 37 games with the Red Sox. 37 games. He was a freak. He was an absolute freak. I, I don't understand that. I don't. Under, Randy Johnson was to me. Now Pedro Martinez, obviously dominant. I I don't know how you could sit there and watch Randy Johnson's career and go. Ah, he's not unanimous. And maybe some of that, maybe, who knows? Maybe there are people who think, oh, well, you know what? He could have been a PED. Maybe maybe that shies votes away. But even in the past, before this PED stuff happened, there, were, there weren't none of these unanimous guys. I don't understand it. You, you know what it is, is that people said, they looked at Randy Johnson, they looked at Pedro Martinez, they said, they're going to get in. I'm going to put my vote elsewhere. That, that's, that's what But happened. that's the problem. That shouldn't happen. It's almost like, you know, you got to look at these ballots year by year and look who people are voting for and then have, you know, have somebody at the head of this look at this ballot and go, are you freaking kidding me? You know what? We're going to take you off the ballot this year. Maybe that's why. Maybe having the not having the vote every year, you know, taking them away in alternating years is the way to go. Yeah. I mean, look. Keep I, people on their toes. I, I think that not every year somebody needs to go into the Hall of Fame. I think that it, it is an elite class. This year, granted, Elite players. Well, it also has to do with Got money in. because they want that little town of Cooperstown to get that money. You know, oh, putting anybody course, in, and yeah. nobody's going to go travel Always there in the summer. Money. Always about you money. You need to have a class there because you know what? It's good for business. It's good for the economy up there, and that's the way it is.
Yeah, I mean, and listen, there, it's not like there's a shortage of players. We we just went went through a whole list of people that that didn't make it that deserve to be in. Interesting case next year would be Ken Griffey Jr. Because he's Ken, in. he's in, he's got to be. But here's the thing with Ken Griffey Jr. Never has once been linked to PEDs, and I don't, I don't think he did. Because his body never really bulked up from where it was. He had such a sweet swing. And he was injured all he, the time. All the time. And if you're taking, you know, PDs, a lot of times it's to help, you know, injury. And he was banged up a lot. Uh, to me, the prettiest swing of my childhood was Ken Griffey Jr. Loved it. Unbelievable. Him now, and Rafael Palmero, too, right. who was a PED user. But, like I said, I mean, that's pretty hard to keep a guy like Rafael Palmero out of the Well, here's thing. the thing. They've done a good job of putting now the pitchers in. Well, they haven't put Clemens in, but they'll put the pitchers in like we saw the three pitchers here. But a home run hitter in the PD era is probably going to get in on the first ballot next year in Griffey. And is that now the point where... Well, we saw that last year with Frank Thomas, remember? Okay, fair. I forgot about Frank Thomas, which but is fair. But he was the, really the only one in the Mitchell report that came out and said, I did not do this. He was right. the only player in Major League Baseball at that time that actually spoke to Senator Mitchell. You're right. You're right. So, I mean, that that's a good point. He came out and spoke and all that. But my there's going to be one of these guys one of these years where... You're going to have to say, okay, well, we put him in because we really don't think he did. Maybe it is time just to kind of open up the gates. It has to happen. It has to happen. I hope so, and I hope once it opens, I hope that everybody else gets in. And by the way, I'm— Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for interrupting you. I'm going to say something that's going to tick people off here, and it's not—it's never right to cheat in a sport. But the fact that as fans we get all, like, angry and feel robbed, you're doing major damage to your body and your health when you inject yourself or take a PD in any way. The fact that you're doing that and you're doing it because I can be entertained, because you're going to make money, because I'm going to spend money as a fan to be entertained, watching you hit home runs and do all this, you're doing damage to your body in exchange for the fans getting entertained. You know what? That doesn't bother me. Look, I'm, That's your life. That's your body. If you're going to do that, I'm going to enjoy watching you hit home runs. I'm not advocating for steroids in any way, shape, or form. No, I'm here, not either. I, I don't, don't think you should cheat. But. The, only, the only reason why this is an issue is it's a morality thing. Right. That's what sets people off at the end of the day. It's not that big of a deal. I think that the steroids have been around forever. Let's be honest with Steve. And there's no eye test for steroids. you got to remember that. You love baseball. I love baseball. Was baseball more exciting in 1998 or was baseball more exciting last year? Well, I think that anybody could admit that when they're younger, things are a little bit more exciting. Right. <laughs> you, grow, you grow to be cynical after a while. True. But I, uh, I did love that home run chase in 98. It's great. Um, I, you know... Enjoyed Yankees' success in 98, and a lot of those players have been proven to have taken PEDs. Right. But at the end of the day... It's not right. Look, I understand it's not, it's not right. It's not right, but in the in the time, there, there was no rule against it in baseball either. I know that, that that's been beaten to death, but there was that's no a great rule point. against it. And these guys were our competitive, competitive animals, and they will do anything to get an edge. And maybe it, at the end of the day, it was just gamesmanship. You know what? I have no idea. I agree. So to bring this full circle, we would both put put them all in. Yes. One for all, all for one. If they deserve it, put them in. You got the numbers, you're in. Okay. All right. I, I think we're in full agreement there. Well, Steve-O, I think we can wrap it up now. How about how was, this, how was your first taste of the British Credit Podcast? I enjoyed it. You enjoy, okay, so you ready for a full year, a fun year in 2015? I can't wait for it. It's going to be fun. All right. So now uh, you can't hate the fat-hating uh, Steve Morali on Twitter because he doesn't have one. You can follow me at Mraz, CBS. M R A Z C B S. I changed my Twitter handle wow, to fit that. the show. How about that? Uh, you can obviously hit us up on YouTube at youtube.com slash the DA show. We got this permission granted sa- uh, on uh, permission granted podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes. Follow the show, facebook.com slash the DA show. DA's Twitter, DA on CBS. Constantly interact with us. If you're new to the show, please interact with us. The more the better on social media. Um, call into the show when it's on but keep listening keep giving us feedback what do you guys want to hear on the uh, permission granted podcast because we're more than willing to talk about it and have some fun so steve thank you and uh we'll catch up next week thanks very much for us